Okay, welcome to Printed Circuit Board Design Part 2, Board Layout. Uh, in this video, we're assuming you've already watched and created schematic uh, in Eagle using the schematic capture software uh, and done an electrical rule check to make sure you have a valid schematic. So what we're going to be doing next is a layout of the board, so taking that schematic and translating it into a physical design, then doing a design rule check that we can then pass the uh, completed file off to manufacturing and later skills module on assembly, soldering, and putting everything together and then uh, we'll show that it works, okay? So, starting off, uh, we want to talk about what exactly we're doing here. So the whole idea behind PCB layout is to work uh, from a schematic and turn it into a physical layout that we can use to get a board manufactured, right? So I've got a schematic here in the background, and this is the printed circuit board design for the schematic that I've got before. And you'll see there's a lot of different colors here, the green, the blue, the red, and what these represent is different layers of copper on the board itself, right? So the red represents the top side of the board, the blue represents the back side of the board or bottom side of the board, and green is anything that is on both, right? So the idea here is those uh, traces, those uh, red and blue lines and green lines and things like that represent copper that is laid down and etched into the front, uh, the top of a board, right? So we call this a trace. A trace is typically described as having a width and a thickness, right? So the thickness is what we call the weight. So a one ounce weight is pretty typical for a printed circuit board. This is how much copper per inch is poured onto the top of a fiberglass substrate, that's what this uh, big green thing is here, and then the th width is usually measured in what we call mils, or uh, thousandths of an inch, right, and we're going to be using that uh, terminology as we go on. Printed circuit boards also have a bunch of other features, namely uh, they can have lots of different sides, so you can have a single sided uh, printed circuit board which only has components on one side of the board, that's pretty typical double-sided has components on both sides of the board um, or you can have uh, 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 only circuits on one side or only circuits on the other side uh, things like that and we can also have multiple layers so a lot of really complicated circuit printed circuit boards like motherboards and things like that have upwards of four layers where there's actually sandwiches of copper insulator and uh, that substrate all the way through here right and uh, typically, you'll see uh, the manufacturing houses that we use for prototyping will do uh, double-sided or four-layer boards. So double-sided is just the uh, typical that we look at here where we've got copper on both sides of a single layer of substrate, a single layer of usually it's a typical fi uh, typically fiberglass. Um, or you can have a four-layer board, which would have a top, a bottom, and then two middle layers as well. Uh, a couple of other features that we include in uh, uh, printed circuit boards is the solder mask. And what this is, is a mask that is uh, laid down uh, on top of our circuit and it's basically a layer of plastic or a layer of, a layer of epoxy that covers up all the things, all the contacts uh, that we don't want exposed. So you can see there's like this green color on top of all of the copper that's sitting on top of the board except in the places where we want to solder things. So anywhere there's a pad or something we want to solder into that is exposed and it's actually got a little bit of uh, tinning, a little bit of uh, solder already uh, put on top of it. And what that does is it protects uh, unwanted electrical connections uh, from happening all over the board and uh, things like that. So this is a professionally manufactured printed circuit board. This is a um, uh, one that you would, uh, this is pretty typical of what you would see somebody produce in their garage or something like that, which you can totally do. Uh, and also there's the silk screen. And what the silk screen is, is this white printing that goes on top of everything. And what this does is it allows us to see where components go. So you can see this is uh, uh, capacitor C8, this one is C7, C6, uh, there's some diodes over here, D1 and D2, things like that. And this uh, helps us when we're trying to figure out where components need to go on the board as it's being assembled. So we're going to look at how to design all three of these things uh, as we go. A lot of it is done automatically for us by Eagle. Uh, for instance, the uh, solder mask is generated by 
um, is generated automatically because the pads when we're creating these parts pads are special and Eagle knows not to cover up the pads but any other wires that we add to this to the uh, printed circuit board uh, can be covered up with solder mask then uh, the when we were designing our parts we also designed an outline for each of the footprints and these footprints include information about uh, where what the orientation of the chip is where um, uh, pin one is all kinds of good stuff like that so that is already sort of done for us uh, and we can add things to it like the names and rearrange things and stuff like that which we'll be doing in Eagle in a second there's a couple of component technologies that we're going to use. Uh, one is through hole, and this is the typical older technology. This is uh, what what uh, is mostly available for prototyping, and this is what we use when we're using a breadboard or something like that. Through hole technologies actually poke through the surface of the board. Surface mount technologies sit just sit on on top, right? So these are uh, capacitors and resistors that are stuck on top of the board and never actually go all the way through. So to reiterate, through holes. The legs of components go through the hole and we typically solder on the opposite side of where the components are. Surface mount is done on the top side. It's, uh, those components sit directly on top of the board and soldering is done in the same place. And This is a much cheaper, much more dense technology, but it's also way harder to do by hand. So we're going to be focusing on through hole technologies in this set of skills modules, but look for surface mount soldering in the future. We also have what's called a via, and what a via is, is a uh, way of transitioning between uh, a trace that is on the top side of the board through a hole that is plated with copper and then to the bottom side of the board. So we can actually do things like go under components, go around components, things like that, and this is what enables us to make a really dense really small printed circuit board. The smaller it is, the cheaper it is, so the, we're going to be using vias a lot to make sure that uh, one, components don't cross over each other or traces don't cross over each other, and we can make a nice dense uh, printed circuit board. And as many vias as we have, they, it, it doesn't really cost anything extra to add them, so we're going to use them uh, without uh, having to worry about any additional cost or anything like that. So some, before we get started, some li uh, guidelines for laying out uh, these, uh, these printed circuit boards. Uh, one thing is, as we're putting the components down on the board and putting them down in the design, we want to make sure that we put the components that are connected together as close together as possible, because this keeps the traces short. The shorter the traces are, the less internal resistance there is, the less time there is for things to go wrong, and the less space we use up. Uh, also, we want to lay out things logically and functionally. We want the board to kind of make sense, right? Again, if two components are connected together and they interact with each other, they should be as close together as possible. Uh, traces should transition by 45 degrees. And I've got an example here. So here is uh, a 45 degree transition and here is everything else, right? So the idea here is that uh, not only is it clear, uh, it looks good, uh, it's pretty snazzy, but um, the, the problem is when we actually do the manufacturing, the um, uh, manufacturing process is an etching process. And inside of these really sharp corners, uh, there can be a extra amount of reaction and it can eat away at the transition here. So these sharp transitions of, um, of 90 degrees or more um, will can cause uh, shorts and all kinds of electrical problems at these points because of errors in manufacturing. So to minimize the possibility of errors in manufacturing, we try to stick to uh, 45 degree transitions uh, between uh, wires. If two wires are meeting or something like that, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, but if there's a uh, if the the wire is just bending, we want to try and keep those to around 45 degrees uh, because that'll ensure a good connection uh, when it's once it's manufactured. Uh, trace widths should match current requirements. When we talk about current requirements, we're talking about electrical current, right? The idea here is that since we have a, th a fixed thickness of copper, we want to make sure that when we have a really high current, that we have a thicker uh, width of the copper. So if we have a current going through a trace that's one amp, we want to make sure that that trace is 10 mils wide at least for a weight of copper of one ounce. Uh, if it's two ounces, then that's twice as thick, so we can have uh, a much smaller, um, uh, a much smaller trace, right? 
and it goes up pretty wide. And you can see that it's pretty, uh, pretty well proportional uh, all the way through here, except that when we get to really high currents, we have to have really wide uh, traces to enable the uh, enable the system to carry. And this is remember, this is in mils, right? So uh, mils is a thousandth of an inch. So this is still only a third of an inch. A, a pretty small trace can carry uh, quite a bit uh, of current, uh, even on one ounces. So. Uh, also, you want to make sure when you're laying out the traces that the traces uh, size and spacing should match the manufacturing requirements. Remember, we're going to get this thing made by somebody and we want to make sure that it comes out the way we expect. So if things are too small or if they're too close together, that can lead to manufacturing errors and we want to avoid that. Right? Uh, let's look at an example. This is uh, an example manufacturer from, uh, it's called Osh Park, Open Source Hardware Park. Uh, this is someplace that I like to use. They have really cheap prices. Uh, it's $5 per square inch of board, uh, which includes three copies and free shipping, which is a really excellent price. It's manufactured in the United States. Their turnaround time is usually two weeks, which is blindingly fast uh, for such a short run of uh, printed circuit boards. You can get much lower prices, but usually the volumes have to go up quite a bit. Like you're talking about hundreds or thousands of boards, and you might be talking about a quarter per board, but talking about extremely low volumes like three copies or just one copy of anything, then the expense goes up immensely. So uh, Osh Park on their website, they have a design rule, uh, a set of design rules, and the idea here is to show what they can manufacture reliably. So uh, their design rules include a six, to, a six mil minimum trace width. So the smallest trace that they can put down is six mils. The, uh, all traces must be separated by at least six mils. Um, the edge of the board and any traces should be 15 mils, so don't get too close to the edge of the board. And they can't drill any smaller than 13 mils. And this is insanely small. So a lot of this is, uh, is really, really small. And we'll look at how to uh, check these design rules in Eagle. And really, a lot of these design rules are handled by Eagle. So uh, as we're going to see, the Eagle, we can do a design rule check and make sure that any design that we've produced inside the printed, of the printed circuit board in Eagle uh, conforms to these design rules, which is really handy before we manufacture it to prevent any kind of errors. So, uh, when we're doing silk screens, the last of the uh, layout uh, guidelines is we don't really want the values. We only want the names, and we want them to be as close to the reference part as possible so that uh, when we're assembling these things, uh, we want to um, uh, make sure that we know which part is which and stuff like that. We want to stay out of the pads because remember the solder mask will obliterate any of the uh, anything above it. So the uh, the solder mask, the tinning of the pads, stuff like that will uh, delete the names and stuff like that. And the idea here is just to be as clear as possible. This is about assembling and being clear for whoever is assembling uh, the printed circuit board. So um, clarity is super important, right? So let's look at how this works in Eagle. Okay, so here we're back in Eagle, and I've opened up the schematic that we finished in the last video, right? Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to a board view of this schematic. And the way we do that is by going to File, Switch to Board, and it's going to say this board uh, doesn't exist yet. Do I want to create from the schematic? Absolutely, yes, I do, right? So what it shows is a new view of the schematic, of the design, in the printed circuit board view. Right? And we have a couple of things here. These are all of our components and what's called the rat's nest. Right? All of these little yellow lines represent an electrical connection that needs to be made. Right? Uh, and all of these outlines represent actual physical parts. So we're going to lay them out in this big square uh, as densely as we possibly can. And what this, these lines are, this big square is, is the physical outline of our board. This is the extent of our board, this is the shape and size of our board, right? And it, Eagle gives us automatically the maximum dimensions for this particular version of Eagle. So in this one, it's uh, 100 millimeters by 80 millimeters, so it's a little bit shorter than it is wide, uh, but you can see, you can already tell that that's gonna be way too big for our particular board. So. Um, what I'm going to do in this case is actually go through and we're going to lay out these components as close as we can, right? So uh, the next thing we're going to do is we want to make sure that our design rules are correct, right? And the way we do that is we go to Tools, DRC, and DRC stands for Design Rule Check, 
and we go through and we check to see if all of our uh, design rules uh, match what uh, the manufacturer can do, right? So uh, layers, this is uh, number of layers. We've got two layers, good. Uh, clearance, that should be, uh, from our manufacturing, that should be six mils, right? So we're gonna change all these to six mils uh, in a second. The distance uh, between copper and dimension should actually be only about 15 mils. Drill hole should be six mils. Uh, stuff like that, right? So we just go through and we check all of these things. Here's the restring. This is the pads and vias. This is uh, where we would define that uh, seven mil annular distance around uh, holes, uh, shapes, supply, all that kind of stuff. Um, we can set all this stuff manually, but what's really cool is a lot of manufacturers provide a design rule file because Eagle is so popular, right? So what we can do is actually go back to the beginning here, go to load, there's my uh, design rule file, DRU, uh, and all I have to do is open it, hit apply, and I can go back through here and see, look, everything's changed to six mils, distance is 15, the copper dimension is 15 mils, three mils, minimum drill is thir three, uh, 13 mils, restring, the annular distance is seven mils, all kinds of good stuff, right? So we've got verified rules that are available, and we'll come back to this uh, in a in a few minutes or after yeah in a few minutes uh, when we do our design rule check but we want to make sure that we set the rules now so first off we want to start uh, looking at how we can lay out these components right so basically all we're going to do is start moving them around right and what I like to start with is the interfaces you want the interfaces the things that are going to plug onto the board I like to put them as close to the edge of the board as possible so that uh, everything works out uh, well. So I'm going to take, I'm going to start with my header and I'm going to move this guy uh, down here. I'll just kind of drop him somewhere in there. Next is to start adding this stuff uh, in what makes sense, right? The interface is going to talk to the chip, so the chip should probably go next. Right, and you can see that pulls a whole lot of wires with it. So the chip is going to be connected to the circuitry up here, the chip and uh, the wires uh, on the header as well. Right, and they're kind of scattered all over the place. So I'm just going to kind of do my best uh, to fit it. Uh, I also want to make sure that I'm far enough away from the edge of the board that my names and stuff like that don't get stick out. But I can actually move the names later. Right, so I'm going to let it stick out here for a second. But I'm going to make sure that the um, edge of the chip uh, doesn't go over the edge of the board. Then I'm going to start moving in some of these power components. You can kind of see how they're connected. So this one is connected to uh, some of these wires over here. So I'm going to move that in uh, immediately. And he's connected to that one too. And I can rotate these and move them around all I want just the same as uh, before. And I want them to kind of make sense in how they're connected, right? So you can kind of see that uh, my uh, that these two are connected together. So I'm gonna lay them over and note that the names are gonna cross over. We're gonna move those around here in a second. And all of this is, is in flux, right? So uh, as we go through this process, uh, we're gonna move this stuff around a whole lot. Uh, then I'm gonna move my LED grid. Uh, there's the anchor for the LED grid right here. This is a good uh, part layout. It's pretty dense, uh, nothing's overlapping all that kind of good stuff. So let's start uh, cleaning up some of these names. And I'm gonna start moving these names and stuff around. And to do that, we're gonna use what's called the smash tool. Uh, smashes the name away from, the names and values away from the, um, uh, from the, uh, the components, right? So I can smash this particular guy. And what it does is it allows us to move uh, all that stuff around, right? So now I can click on the anchor for the name and I can move it over here if I wanted to. That's just a, a name. So I'm gonna actually turn off the values here, right? I don't need 10K, I don't need R1, uh, any of that stuff. So I'm gonna go into the layers here and I'm gonna turn off values, right? So what that does as I apply it is it's gonna make all the values of this stuff disappear, right? So this is what is, can be included on the silk screen. So when we export this stuff, you can actually turn off the values and not have to worry about it, right? Good, so those are all pretty close to each other. It kind of makes sense. So now that I've got the parts all laid out, 
uh, we can start wiring them up. So to lay down some of these wires, to lay down these traces, the first thing we're going to need to use is the trace tool, the route tool. And this is a manual route. There's also an auto route, but I like to do the manual route. Uh, and, and really, there's no real wrong way to do this. This is an engineering art. Um, there are better ways to do this uh, than others, like making sure, making a more compact board or short traces and stuff like that. But um, the techniques are just kind of up to, uh, up to your own style. Uh, what I like to do first is to route the power and ground signals and then route all the signals around them. Uh, that, that's my preference. Uh, but so that's how we're going to approach it here, but uh, it's entirely up to you. So when we first start this tool, you notice that the toolbar starts uh, to look a little bit different. Uh, first, uh, we want to check, uh, select our layers, and these are our two uh, layers for copper. So I have a top side which is red and the bottom side which is blue. I typically like to route ground first uh, and keep that on the bottom. We'll see why later. So next we want to select what kind of automatic transition it wants to make. And we already talked that we don't want to do 90 degrees, so we're going to do uh, 45 degree wire bends uh, like this where it follows us around after doing a straight shot. My width, now this is in mils, so this is 16 mils, right, which is plenty. That's huge for um, our limitations. Remember the manufacturer is at uh, 6 mils minimum. 16 mils is still going to be really tiny and we don't have to worry about it. I like round vias because they're pretty. We want to make sure that our drill uh, diameter are our diameters for the vias and that the drill uh, size is big enough. And drill of 23 mils, so that's plenty big. 10 mil, or uh, yeah, it's 10 mils bigger than the minimum, so that's going to be just fine too. So I'm going to make my um, grid a little bit finer. All right. So now that that's all set up, we can actually start picking. Uh, our signals and routing them around. Now to see where ground starts, uh, we can actually use a tool that's built into the command line part of Eagle, and we do what's called show. Uh, so show will highlight uh, whatever signal we want, right? And all we have to do is tell it what we want. In this case, the signal's name is GND. So we say show ground, and you can see where the ground uh, comes in. It's going to come in on this pin number one over here, and it's going to head all over uh, here. Right, so this is what we're gonna we're, uh, we want to route, and remember that the green um, pads are top and bottom, right? So that uh, the green pads are both on the top and the bottom of the board. So we have to go around those when we're routing the ground around, right? Uh, so I'm going to go back to my routing tool. I'm going to start here, and you can see the little blue line following me around. Uh, that's much smoother. Lots more options looking good. Okay, so I'm going to route, all I have to do is, just like I was laying down wires, uh, click as we go around. Makes nice, clean 90 degrees here, very cool. And oh, uh, if you've got more than one thing in the same area and you click, you can see that each one highlights and you can right click to go to the next one. So if you want one and not the other, you can kind of cycle through the um, uh, the options and, and go through them like this. Now I'm going to try and avoid the inside of the chip here as much as I can because I know that all these signals have to be routed up to the uh, LED grid so I'm going to go around the outside of the chip uh, as much as I can. Awesome. So let's show our power which in this case show plus 5 volts. Awesome, so we can do another one. Now, I like to put the power on the top, so we'll do the same thing, but I'm gonna put it on the top of the board. Now I can cross top and bottom, no problem. They're on different sides of the board, so there's not gonna be any issue uh, crossing these things around. Cool, all right, so now we can just sort of uh, trace through all of these little uh, things here, right? Trace through all the parts. So I'm going to complete a little bit of this until we get to a place where we need to do a via and then I'll show you how that works. Okay, so now you can see that I've done most of the signals for the bottom row of signals on the board uh, and I've kind of painted myself into a corner with this very last one here. So I've got this guy here and I need to get him over there. But you can see that there's blue right next to him so I got to start out going on top but then I run into all the red, which kind of goes around. So I could really, you know, I could go, I'm boxed in unless I want to route all the way around and all the way down and around, right? And this is exactly why vias exist. So 
the idea here is that what I'm going to do is I'm going to route uh, red, I'm going to route top uh, until I get to about here, right? So I'm going to cross over and get out all, outside of all this blue stuff. Then I'm going to switch. I've clicked, right? So I've routed up to that place. Then I'm going to go to the layer. I'm going to choose bottom and I can start routing. Uh, I'm gonna, I can start routing on the bottom side now, right? So I can follow blue all the way up through this little area. And you can see it put down, automatically put down a nice little via for me. So this is a little pad, a little hole. It's uh, flush with the board. So it kind of doesn't exist as far as the components can go, are concerned. And it can go anywhere, right? Uh, so I'm just going to route uh, right across all this stuff straight through there. Right, and you can switch as many times as you want. You can weave on uh, through and around all kinds of stuff, uh, and that's going to make uh, the way that I've kind of done this at this point um, uh, is going to make uh, running all of these signals a little bit uh, challenging because now I've got all the signals uh, that have to go to the other side of the uh, LED grid uh, to work on, and I'm not sure how that's going to happen. And this is one of the this is part of the aspect that's a uh, where it's an engineering art is that when I'm doing these, uh, when you're doing these printed circuit board designs and the, doing these layouts, the stuff that's important, the uh, the changes that you make, every time you do one of these layouts, you're gonna learn something about the circuit. Maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. And you end up doing it over and over again. And that the, some of the best boards that I've ever designed, the example that I showed at the beginning of the uh, video here, I did that board like four or five times before I was satisfied with uh, how the board was laid out, stuff like that. And I can already see that maybe it'd be a better idea to put some of this power, all of this power stuff, uh, closer to uh, the, the jumper over here so that I can get it out of the way and route all these signals directly up to the LCD, LED screen. I'm not going to do that for the brevity of this uh, presentation, but it is an option, right? So think about that when you're designing your boards. All right, so I've got all the signals routed, uh, and it was pretty much the first pass. I didn't have to make many modifications, stuff like that. Some of these things are bothering me. I like the uniform. I like to do uniform spacing, and I haven't done that here. Uh, these aren't exactly 45 degree angles. I'll probably go back and fix those up uh, later, stuff like that. It gets really niddly, and the idea here is to be not so clear about the traces, but clear about how the board is laid out uh, and where components are and stuff like that. So we don't even have to worry about that. But uh, you can see that I've got all this empty space on the circuit board, right? So uh, to make this uh, the right size, we're going to pull in all the outline here. This is the dimension outline. And when I click on it, you'll see um, that I can move it around and bring in uh, where the line is. And uh, it's pretty much good to go. So this is the printed circuit board. This is where the uh, the, the machine is going to cut the board away from a bigger, much bigger piece of uh, printed circuit board, and uh, where all my stuff goes. Right. Uh, you can also add things like mounting holes and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, which is really especially handy uh, when you actually want to build this into a physical device of some kind, uh, stuff like that. Um, but we won't go into that now. So the last bit is to do the design rule check and make sure that this is a valid manufacturable board, right? Uh, to do that, we click on this little thing right here, the DRC. Uh, make sure, yep, my order design rules are, are set up already. And I just hit check. Okay, so it gives me, it's giving me a bunch of clearance error and it's on layer number 16, which is the bottom. So if I double click on it, it highlights what's wrong. And I can zoom in and you can see that the corners are too close together here, right? If I look at this one, the uh, the even though it doesn't actually overlap, this trace and the via are too close together, uh, stuff like that. So there's not actually um, a problem where they're overlapping, but in this case, it's just too close together, right? It's less than the manufacturable uh, value. So uh, what I can do is I can I'm going to move this guy. Just out a little bit if I run the design rule check again. Boom! Processed everything, no errors. Now the last thing that we're going to do before we send this off to be manufactured is we're going to add a power and a ground plane. And what these are is basically a big filled area that uh, is, is copper that's not going to be etched away and it's connected to power and ground. 
And the idea here is that the two plates, the power plate on the top and the ground plate on the bottom, will kind of act as a big capacitor and will filter out any extra noise and stuff like that. It's actually really handy and really useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the polygon tool here and we're going to set it to the top. Uh, it's just going to be a big square so we're going to not have to worry about that or any of this rounding stuff. And we're just going to run uh, the rectangle tool all the way around the outside of the board. All right, trying to stay away from the edges and uh, things like that. We can go under the components, we can go around everything, all that kind of stuff, no big deal, and we're just going to end up where we begin. Now it starts to go dotted shape like this, right? And in a second we're gonna, I'm going to show you what it looks like when it fills in. But the first thing we want to do is we want to set the signal, right? So I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to give it plus 5 volts. When I do show plus 5 volts, that's part of the 5 volt signal. Right? So all of these traces and this guy are all going to be attached to this big power plane here. Right? And you can see what happens when I go to fill it in. When I do press the rat's nest button, it's going to update everything related to this rectangle and it'll fill it all in. Right? So I hit the rat's nest and it fills it all in and you can see that it's keeping away from all of these little uh, traces and stuff like that and it's kind of filling in around it, right? which is pretty cool and it shows here that it's actually connected so that that those lines for the 5 volt uh, ground actually dipped into this filled plane so everything that's connected to 5 volts ends up being connected to that plane right we're gonna do the same thing for the ground now to make this a little bit easier to see uh, I'm gonna turn off the top layer right so I don't have to look at it and it doesn't confuse me I'm gonna put down a rectangle I want the bottom layer. Again, I'm going to give it a name, call it ground, and then when I do polygon, there we go. A little bit weird fix, right? So you can see that all the ground stuff filled in, so this entire thing is filled in with the ground uh, plane. Right, so we have a power and a ground plane, and that's going to help with our signal integrity, and it makes it a little bit cheaper. It's we don't we're not wasting any copper uh, or anything like that. So the only thing that's actually going to get etched away is all of these black areas, uh, which is really snazzy. Right. So let's go back to this. We'll turn that one back on, so we can see both top and bottom. Everything's all nice and filled in. Looks great. Uh, we'll do the design roll check one more time. Give it a check, no errors, and it's ready to be manufactured. So when we do the manufacturing, we can actually just send off, uh, if we're using Osh Park, we can just send off this board file. So it's a LED grid module .brd. We can send the manufacturer, Osh Park, that file, and they'll manufacture it straight from this, silk screens and all, no worries, right? Uh, other companies might need different uh, uh, formats of the file. Some people need a, a GRB uh, file, which is a Gerber uh, design file. It's a CAD CAM modeling file, uh, stuff like that. And they'll have specifics on how to do that. And you can look up uh, tutorials online on uh, how to how to get that uh, uh, how to export uh, a board design as a Gerber file or anything like that. But for Osh Park, this is all we need to do. We can just save it and email them the BRD file and we're good to go.